I'm Clyde Zelch, and I'm a modern day pioneer, living mostly off grid and enjoying life. When I was a little boy, I loved log cabins. And as I grew up, I always said, I'm gonna build a log cabin. What I didn't know was I was gonna end up building or rebuilding 23 different log cabins, some of which are right here. I've had some that burnt down on us in a different location. We rebuilt our village right here. Him and I had five sons and one daughter, six kids, and probably as many as 10 grandchildren already. And I really liked the idea of my kids growing up, learning how to do things like our pioneers, pioneer forefathers, or had to do. So our kids, they, they know both the modern world that we live in and they know how our forefathers had to struggle and had to work and how they were, how they had to overcome things. I love log cabins. I love all these old tools. I love finding an old tool, trying to figure out exactly what our, what the pioneer forefathers used it for. And then I teach Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and different church groups and our children and our grandchildren so that if anything ever happened in the country they, they would know how to survive. The old log cabin church is about 153 years old and originally I was told that it was used by Quakers as a meeting house. We, I took it down, moved it, rebuilt it, finished it uh, and we have church here twice a month and we, it's nothing for us to have 40, 50 people or sometimes 60 people. People will be standing outside the windows, standing outside the doors, just to be a part of it. No electricity, just candles. As far as the church, it's a non-denominational Christian church. And many times I have prayed and said to God, now help me out with the sermon. Uh, lead me in the right direction so that I do a good job for you. Many times I would change my mind on what the sermon was going to be about as I walked in the door. But... We're no fluff, no fancy, just straight out of the Bible and straight to the people kind of church. Well, in just a minute, we'll go look at our newly installed wind generator. And that's gonna tie in with all the solar panels that I've already got going. So most all of our life, we've lived totally off grid. And over the past few years, I've gotten solar panels. Now we've got this new wind generator starting to, starting to get a few modern conveniences, but still independent from the grid for the most part. Right now, I'm, sit, I'm standing in front of some of the older panels that I installed years ago. I have different solar panels and now a recent wind generator up there. Everything ties together. Then I have uh, my, I've put together a solar powered or wind generator powered system and there's batteries in different places on my property hidden to store that energy. <coughs> I'm sure right now you could go out and buy a much better system much more modern but this is something I started building years ago and, and it's uh, it's worked real well served us real well and then whenever it rains we catch all our water in these polyurethane tanks which I've got three tanks over 5,000 gallons of water it's all filtered it's all cleaned comes back into the house my wife uses a pitcher pump and pumps the water back into the house for bathing or just for cooking in general over the years we've sponsored and had different activities out here. People just love coming out looking at the old log cabins. We've had three and four day rendezvous where uh, mountain men, mountain women would come and set up and do different blanket trades and show different old world skills. Just recently we had a bluegrass festival. Many different bands will come and play old fashioned country bluegrass music. Most of the time things have to be old fashioned because generating electricity here has always been a problem. But we get many, we get hundreds of people to show up and they enjoy the simplicity of, of where we're at. This is 
is our garden. We've got two different gardens. Uh, it's doing really well. We get a lot of tomatoes. We get a lot of cucumbers. We, our gardens grow real well here. So we raise our own food as much as possible in the garden. We have chickens. They supply meat and eggs, and we've got ducks. And uh, though we don't eat ducks very often, but we eat the eggs every day. We've got a lot of different kinds of animals. We've got cows, and we've got goats, and occasionally we'll have some rabbits. So it isn't uh, that we don't go to the store once very uh, occasionally, but it's pretty rare. We're able to live right here pretty cheap compared to most people. Here's some zucchini, doing real well. Cucumbers this year are really doing well. Uh, cucumbers are just everywhere here. Here's, here's another cucumber growing. Emil put up a bunch of pickles. We've got pumpkins growing. But this year our tomatoes are just everywhere. We've just got tomato plant after tomato plant. So I can either eat fried green tomatoes or just wait for them to ripen up and eat red ones fresh right off the vine. So as you look, there is just one tomato plant after another. Got some corn growing, got some beans going up on the poles. And what's really taking over the garden is, is a, a pumpkin that I wasn't expecting. A couple pumpkin plants are growing, the vines are spreading everywhere, so we'll have a bunch of pumpkins I wasn't expecting. This is an old well. And this is an old pump that we've got in here. So you can hand crank it and get the water to come out. It doesn't require any electricity, it just requires muscle. It's 21 foot deep, about five foot in diameter, all laid up. This was here when we bought the property, nothing else. And we're pretty excited to be able to use something that was already here before. Right now in the background, it's a blacksmith shop, an old blacksmith shop, a lot of old blacksmith tools. Uh, any of the tools I find, I bring them here, I save them, I keep them from being melted down and sold off to other countries. <clears throat> and different people like myself will do blacksmithing to demonstrate to, to the kids how our forefathers had to, uh, had to fix and repair. Now by trade, I'm a welder, but blacksmithing is uh, it's in our blood, we really enjoy it. Here is a, an old marshal's office with a lot of old handcuffs. A lot of things that the marshals and the police of yesteryear and some that I've used as a policeman in modern times. So you're welcome to come on in and look at some of these old locks and look at what I've collected from around the world. There's different badges, different things uh, as I've traveled around the world doing some police work since about 2004 till now, 2018, I've been in about 30 different countries helping other different law enforcement agencies. I know just looking at me, you might find that hard to believe, but <clears throat> that's the truth. Here's some old uniforms that I wore here in Missouri as a policeman. <clears throat> but what I try to do is I try to find old handcuffs, old badges, some older patches, some old, some new, so that the kids can see how it used to be. This is an old newspaper article of one of the first cabins that uh, Emma and I and the kids built, and our first probably three or four kids. Now, this log cabin actually burnt down on us. Took me years to build it, and it just took about 30 minutes for most of it to burn down. So that was a that was a devastating loss, but we didn't give up. So in here is different news articles of different log cabins of about 23 different log cabins that I have built or rebuilt over the years. And now we're standing in what I like to call Pioneer Homestead and Village or Zelch Farms, which is a whole lot of log cabins that I have found and moved and rebuilt. So we didn't we didn't give up. And there's in here in the marshal's office. It's a, a museum of, I could fill this, I could fill this building with news articles of different log cabins that I have rebuilt both in the United States and in Africa. Here we're surrounded by some old wagon wheels that I was able to find out of the salvage yard. Some of them I put to use and, and rebuilt some wagons and some of these are just extra and then I welded this nice arch up because I wanted to see them. And this is what we're using as our entrance way to our home.
I think there's a whole lot of people watching this or that come and visit and they long for and wish for a simpler life. And I've got to tell you, I encourage you to do something, but it isn't, it isn't easier. It might be simpler, but it isn't easier. So this is a labor intensive life that I'm leading with my family. But here's some more older items, uh, like this crosscut saw. You know, the boys, all my kids grew up using crosscut saws. It's just a wonderful life for them to experience something that they would not normally be able to experience. Here we're grinding cornmeal. Normally I just get the kids to do it. So I'll get one of the kids down here and demonstrate. Uh, everybody takes turns, because this again, this takes, takes quite a while. But you put your corn in here, you grind it up, goes into the can, and this is for cows and for chickens. Okay, no, no I can't. <laughs> This is corn before it's ground, and this is corn after. We can feed this to the chickens and to the other animals. Mostly thinking that I just wanted to save the building. Little did I know that twice a month we would end up having church service here and have 40, 50, 60 people show up twice a month, if not more sometimes. So it's a, it's a wonderful building. It's a good place to meditate and, and uh, kind of get your head straight. standing in front of a $6,000 house. It's all it cost me. It took about 28 days for me to build it. For 28 days, we, was, we moved in. I, the only help I really had was a couple little kids and my wife. So we was able to do it ourselves on a shoestring. And we lived there. And we raised kids there. Mostly used material, pulling all the nails and getting the bad boards out and keeping the good boards. The most expensive thing I had to buy was the pin, but it's off grid. Propane lights, little propane refrigerator, some solar lighting. Uh, I'll tell you, whenever when it rains, we're dry. When it's cold, we're warm. And when the bank's knocking, and I'm knocking at our door. <laughs>